Okay. So good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, for anyone who might not know who I am, my name is Nicole Gibson, the Executive Director of the Ajax Pickering Board of Trade. Today we have a very special guest with us uh, to present uh, on digital communications, her master class. So very excited to uh, hear what you have to say and to teach us all of the things about uh, digital communications. Antoinette uh, Burrell has been a member of ours for, for quite a while, um, at least, I don't even know, three, five years, something like that, we met a while ago. Um, and so it's, it's awesome to have her do this for us. So I'm going to, if you don't mind, well, before I start, actually, I'm gonna say a couple of things. One, so everyone knows, uh, the session is being recorded. So we will have that available to all of you uh, afterwards. And also, as we go through the presentation, if you have any questions, there is a chat box. So if you could submit your questions in that chat box, um, either we can save them all for the end and Andra will facilitate that question answer period, or Antoinette, if you wanna check in every once in a while to see what questions might be there, absolutely feel free to do so. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of time just to read some background information. Um, Antoinette is a communications consultant and the founder of Kismet Digital. She works with businesses to create and publish internal and external communications. Her services include email newsletters, training documentation, sales presentations, and communication strategy. Antoinette is an accomplished public speaker for, and corporate trainer who holds certi a certification okay. in corporate communications, adult education, and digital media marketing. She also has more than 15 years of experience as a technology instructor and business communications specialist. That's amazing. Um, this is the first of three sessions we're holding. Um, today, of course, is the Digital Communications master, master Class, and we have two more, one on May 13th, and session three is on May 20th. Um, I think I'll let Andra maybe talk about more of those or Antoinette if you want at the end. Um, but other than that, I'll, I'll flip it over to you. Again, everyone, thanks so much for joining. Um, I hope everyone's safe and keeping well uh, and, and nice to see you all. So Antoinette, with that, I'm gonna hand it over. Thank you so much. Thanks for the introduction, Nicole. Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I am going to be um, just showing you my, my screen in a moment. I'm just gonna share my screen. Uh, every once in a while I'll pop in and I'll just ask, you know, do any, does anyone have any questions on any particular topic that we've covered? But we're gonna have a lot of fun today. I'm gonna show you some really cool stuff and give you some really neat ideas and, and encourage you to really participate with me because that's what it's all about. It's all about networking and expanding, um, you know, your, your communications with new people and, and existing people. So with that, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, okay, here we go. And here we are. Let me know if you are able to see this slide. Just uh, give me a little wave here or say yes. I'm not sure if I can hear you, but I let me know if you can see. You yeah. can all see? Okay, excellent, wonderful. Okay. So it's a little strange me having these two screens side by side because I see you and then I see my screen. Um, okay, so as Nicole oh, mentioned, this is the first of three of three part series, a digital communications master class. And I wanted to offer this up to um, the Ajax Pickering Board of Trade. Number one, just as a way of giving back and saying thank you so much for all your support and um, really just being a wonderful community and a great way to meet new people and just to keep those lines of communications open. Um, right now, because of COVID-19, it's, it's beneficial that we all get a little bit more tech savvy and understand how to work with digital communications for networking because we can't go out into um, facilities or go out into the community at this point. So this will hopefully give you a guide for keeping those fires burning, continuing to make contacts and, um, and just keeping, uh, keeping in touch with, with your connections. So today's session is called Strategic Online Networking. Uh, there will be two more. There's one that I'm doing on Canva and another one that I'm doing on using Constant Contact for um, mailing uh, email newsletters. But we'll talk about that a bit later. So without further ado, let me just jump right in. Right now you should see the second slide. Uh, everyone can see that about me with my photo on it. 
Okay, awesome. Okay, so I won't take too much time with this because Nicole has already introduced me. Um, so I do have a background in technology training. I love training. It's my favorite thing to do. And uh, in my practice, I specialize in newsletters, marketing materials, and also strategy. So working with people who need to figure out what direction to go and how to make those valuable connections to promote their business. So today, here's what we're going to cover in a nutshell. Um, how to select the best online events to attend and which ones to avoid because they're not all going to be a good use of your time and we are getting a little bit of Zoom fatigue. I think uh, one of my friends, I'm going to actually name her out. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, maybe I won't name her out, but uh, she said, yeah, she's getting a little bit of, um, she's getting Zoomed out. So we have to be careful not to attend every single Zoom event because it, it is uh, it is exhausting. But I'll give you some guidelines as to which ones will uh, yield the most benefit. Um, and how to initiate personal conversations with others who are attending webinars, and also how to execute a flawless follow-up strategy. And in the middle there, I'll give you a few tips on how you can make the most out of your own um, visibility online, you know, camera angles, things like that. So just thought I would share this little um, cartoon with you. Everything was fine and then COVID-19 happened. So as you can see, everyone's in their office nice and cozy and then this huge wrecking ball comes down and changes our world. So um, that's really one of the main things that uh, we are going to be aware of is just the new normal and how networking has to take on a new flavor you know, to accommodate the inability for us to go out into the community. So in terms of how to network online strategically, um, here are a few ideas to get you started, how to access your existing network. And it might be a bit awkward for you at first, but once you start doing it and you get rolling, it, you'll get more comfortable with it. So the first thing I would recommend is to, you know, reach out to previous clients or prospects. You probably have their phone number. Pick up the phone and give them a call. And I also have like a little script that I can show you in terms of, you know, what to say when you call folks how to approach them, you know, how to offer your, your help and support in a way that's not too salesy and too, too aggressive. Um, membership directory, I have that on there, but I would recommend that you take that you know, very delicately and not just go and blaze through the entire membership directory and try to call everybody. Be very specific and very strategic about who you decide to call because you don't want to call just for the sake of calling and, you know, throwing your ideas in your you know, sales pitch out there. Um, if there's a membership directory and there's a, a company that you think would really be a good fit for your product or services, that's another source of um, you know, information where you can reach out to people and offer help sincerely and genuinely, not just throwing out a sales pitch. So um, a few people who you think would be a good fit for probably um, you know, building connections with you. Um, there are Facebook groups also that you can join, and that's what? a great source of information. I think someone is here. Uh, you have to read it. Yeah, you have to go through everything. You have to know what, because it tells you what everyone does. Hello, if you can please all mute your lines. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Facebook groups, uh, that's another great way to get involved in a conversation that is on topic. So things that would help you learn and also um, areas where you might be able to offer up your, your expertise to that group of people. And LinkedIn connections. LinkedIn is my favorite social media platform because it is very business oriented and people are very direct about, you know, offering value and helping each other and making connections to other people that will be a great source of expanding your network. Um, so these are the, my top four in terms of how to access your existing network. Um, I'm just gonna check in with um, Andrea at the moment. Are there any questions in the chat box at the moment? Andrea? Apologies. There was only one asking if they're uh, if the recording or the presentation will be available afterwards. So um, I did respond, stating that it's all of our recordings for our sessions are available on our website. If you go to apboardoftrade.com, uh, you will find um, um, a COVID tab. If you click there, all of our COVID uh, resource information is available there, as well as our previous and our current. Uh, uh, presentation. Okay, 
Great, excellent. Yeah, I won't be making the PowerPoint available, but the recording of the whole thing will be available. Okay, so in terms of calling people, I know a lot of people are uncomfortable with picking up the phone and calling um, contacts. They don't want to seem too pushy or they just don't know quite what to say. This is one of the PowerPoint slides where you might want to just take a, a screenshot so you can have it as reference point for when you do decide to pick up the phone and call people. Because believe it or not, a lot of people are just um, sitting in an empty office if they have a home office or sitting at home and just not really quite knowing what to do or who to ask for help. And one thing I found is that everybody really is willing to help. It's bringing out the best in people, um, just being in a difficult situation altogether. So here's just a recommended um, script for calling. So I would just, you know, call somebody, one of my previous clients, for example, and say, hi, you know, hi, John, uh, just touching base to see how you're doing. And then listen, hey, okay, I'm doing fine, or I'm not doing great, or my kids are driving me crazy or whatever. And here's what you do. Don't initially just offer up your services or try to sell them something, right? Because some people really just don't even have any money to, to buy any products or service right now. They're looking for help. So what I would ask them is, is there any area where you need extra support or help right now? So it might be as little as, you know what, um, I'm really stuck because I can't seem to find X. I can't find dog food. I don't know, something, even if it's not business related. And that's your opportunity to say, well, hey, buddy of mine happens to, you know, own a, a pet, you know, pet store or pet supply store and he's willing to, uh, to do deliveries, you know, help get them connected with people who can help them as well. If you can't help them directory and just ask, is there anyone I can introduce you to or anything that you need? And uh, you'd be surprised how much people would be, you know, so grateful. You'd make their day just calling them up to check in on them. But the important thing is really don't sell your services there. It's just a check in to call from one human being to another. Are you okay? Do you need anything? Um, you know, I've heard stories where people, they might not need any supplies, but they said, hey, my car just broke down and I live way out in the country. Is there anyone who can give me a ride to the grocery store? Boom, you've made a friend for life. So just think about ways that you can help. Have a serving mindset and you'd be surprised how um, these relationships will become stronger. So where to network online? So there are a lot of different options for you right now because everybody's gone online. So as usual, there are really no shortage of events that you can attend. Um, for myself, I'm always keeping up with the Ajax Pickering Board of Trade event calendar. And uh, if you've signed up for this course, obviously you've been to that page before on their website, but just keep checking. There's new things popping up all the time. I'd say check it once a week, or of course read their newsletter so you can see what's new, what events are coming up. Some of them um, uh, may be offered for a small fee. A lot of them are free of charge, so that's beneficial to you. And you don't even have to leave your house. So guys, there's no excuse for not attending these amazing seminars because it's so convenient for you right now. Um, I also look at the BACD, Business Advisory Center of Durham in Whitby. Um, they have a lot of webinars happening right now. Um, check Eventbrite and also meet up because even though those are traditionally places where people will make arrangements to meet in real life, right now we can't do that. So people are pivoting, they're adjusting to the situation, they're actually offering their, um, their regular real life events as virtual events. So don't give up on those guys because they are still offering useful information, but just on a virtual platform. And now there's one other that I'll recommend. I don't have the um, logo for it here. If you Google pay what you can training, that's the name of the program. And this is awesome because they have a lot of different marketing seminars and also skills like technology skills, learning Excel, learning how to use PowerPoint, how to write marketing copy, lots of different skills that you can build up during this time and it's pay what you can. So they'll recommend a price. So they'll say for this course, you know, we would recommend that you pay $50 for it. But if you choose to pay nothing, you can actually just pay nothing. And these are experienced um, instructors and experts in their field. So take advantage of this time because it won't be around forever. Any questions on that? We're good. There are, um, there is one question, maybe two, uh, <laughs> um, apologies, it's one. How would you adapt this to the retail sector, bricks and mortar stores? 
Um, here's what you can do. I've seen, so I follow, um, I follow a page on Instagram. It's a clothing store in Uxbridge. And every day they've been putting up just different outfits. They'll hang an outfit on the door or they'll hang a shirt or they'll have the store owner stand up and model in one of their outfits just to show that it's happening. And then in the captions, they'll say, phone this number and you can do curbside pickup. So that's one thing. Use Instagram because that's a great visual for your products. If you're in a product-based services, you should have no shortage of photographs. The other thing you can do is you can have, I heard one store was doing a virtual fashion show. So they started up a, uh, they set up a Zoom session and um, they set up the camera in their store and they just had their employees walk through wearing the outfits <laughs> and that just encourages people. And then you have the interactive part and people say, how much is that? And do you have a scarf to match? Brilliant ideas. So adapt it by showing your stuff, even though people can't come into your store, Make sure you show them your stuff, engage with them on, um, on video and let them know you have curbside pickup available. So that would be my recommendation for retail, for brick and mortar. Does that answer your question? Is that good? That's it. Thank All you. right, awesome, okay. Now, what types of webinars to attend? So of course, uh, it's tempting to attend all of them and we're just bombarded with emails nowadays. I mean, I've never received so many emails in the space of a month because everybody's like, hey, come to my webinar, join this. And then sometimes your friends are running them and you feel pressured, you've got to attend them all. But be very selective and try not to do more than maybe, you know, one every other day or maybe two a week because realistically you have your other life to tend to, right? You've got your kids that are at home and you probably have to homeschool them. Try not to cram your schedule too much. Otherwise you won't be able to learn anything. But the best webinars to attend in my experience is where you get to learn a new skill or upgrade existing ones. So as I mentioned, I've seen um, webinars where they're teaching people how to use Excel or they're teaching people, even webinars teaching you how to use Zoom itself. You're, you're in a Zoom session, you're learning how to um, be a facilitator for a Zoom session. So learning a new skill for me is always um, one of the top priorities. And also any webinars where you're staying connected with your usual networking colleagues. So for example, I don't know if Toastmasters is doing this right now, if they're doing virtual sessions, I think they are. But if that's something where you're used to being in person and speaking and interacting and really engaging with other people, um, if that goes online, definitely participate in those. Or if you belong to a, any other networking type group, you know, if it's BNI or whatever, um, those are important because those are relationships that you worked really hard to build up. You've been working on those connections for, for months or maybe years. You don't want to let things fall by the wayside. So keep the fires burning there. And also it's important to attend info sessions or at least read um, information from trusted sources about COVID-19. And I say trusted sources because a lot of people has, you know, there's tons of people who have an opinion about COVID-19 and there's people who think it's a conspiracy and it's not real and you can cure it by putting bleach into your bloodstream. I'm not gonna name names, we know who said that, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, make sure that the people who are you're listening to or attending their webinars, people you trust or people who you feel would be trustworthy. So uh, info sessions would be a great way to sort of get ideas and strategies for how to manage during this time. Okay, and now the opposite end of the spectrum, what types of webinars to avoid? Beware of get rich quick schemes. It's really interesting how during this time, even though the, the crisis has brought out the best in most people, it's bringing out the worst in other people. Um, I've experienced an increase in the amount of um, spam emails and scams saying, oh, you've won a lottery, uh, um, log into your bank account so we can deposit it. I mean, it's just the nightmare how many people will try to take advantage of this situation. So beware, if it seems too good to be true or anybody is offering you money, just beware again, the government will never you phone you and offer you money. It's all done through their website where you know where to go to the government websites and get the, the, the support that you need. They will never text you and say, we have money, enter your banking details. It doesn't work like that. So beware of those and stay away from them. And also on a more kind of maybe social level, I, I would recommend 
being careful, guard your thoughts. Don't waste time on webinars where they're negative or focused on complaining about the current situation. It really drains your energy. It puts you in a negative mindset. You start feeling hopeless and then little by little, you'll stop talking with people. You'll lose your connections to the community. And then you'll just get so discouraged about everything. It'll be hard to pull yourself out of that again. So if you sense any negativity or if it's just going on too long, you know what? There's nothing wrong with just saying, okay guys, well, I gotta go. You know, we've been on this call for, you know, 20 minutes now and everything's been negative. It just really puts you in a bad frame of mind. So just look out for those ones as well. Any questions? Just one, um, and it's, oh, it was a comment that Toastmaster is doing this. All right, excellent, that's awesome. Okay, so as a little treat, I wanna show you a bit of a video as we get into the next segment of the presentation, talking about how to, uh, to present well on webinars. So I don't know if anyone remembers this guy. Uh, just put yes in the chat box if you remember this interview. So this guy is doing a, a BBC News interview and his kids show up. Did anyone say yes there, Andra? Yes. <laughs> okay. Another so, one, yes. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you, it's a really short video. I'm just gonna switch screens here for a second. Oops. Um, so for those of you who, who haven't seen it, um, this is just absolutely hilarious. And of course now it's a bit of, okay. I'm gonna drag my screen over. Um, let me know if you can see my YouTube screen. Andrew, can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and play. You might not be able to hear the sound, but the visual uh, speaks volumes. <laughs> He's trying so hard. Okay, so you get the idea. I hope you enjoyed that. I mean, when that came out, I, I laughed until I cried. I mean, I couldn't stop watching it. I was addicted to it. So it's pretty, pretty amusing, but it just shows you uh, what could potentially happen because right now we're trying to work from home. We've got kids running around the house, maybe some pets, you know, dogs barking in the background and whatever. And this guy is a boss. I mean, he does such a great job of keeping it together, not losing his cool, not turning around and trying to put them out himself. And then the wife slides in and save the day. So um, that was just a really great example of uh, how to manage an awkward situation with a lot of dignity. So <laughs> hats off to this guy, I love it. Um, okay, so a couple of the things I want to give you in terms of some advice for um, good video conferences, how to present well, how to have uh, great camera angles, that type of thing. Um, the number one thing I would recommend for you is to choose a quiet space. So if you're on a video conference and um, you, especially if you're the presenter or if you've called a meeting with a client by video, uh, choose a quiet space, a room that can have a closed door. And, um, you know, if you have family in the house, maybe if you, your spouse is home, just say, hey, can you take the kids into the backyard for a minute while I do this? Because kids sometimes, they get a little noisy, especially small kids. So that's number one rule for me. And I've got here look up. So it, that's really talking about the camera angle. And I'll show you a quick video clip of how to make that work well for you. Face the light. Don't have the light behind you or a window behind you because it just makes, um, gives you backlighting. So your face ends up really dark. People can't see your expression and it's hard for them to focus if they're distracted by uh, bad lighting. And use a clean background. So I have a, a before and after with example here with this gentleman. Um, before there's people in the background, they're throwing a football around, kind of crazy office environment. In your case, that would be kids or maybe, you know, messy room in the background. Try to avoid that. Um, right here, he's got a nice clean backdrop. It's probably some type of a green screen. Um, you probably don't have a green screen that's at home, that's fine. But use something where it's not a lot of junk, a million and one books and dirty dishes and stuff like that. Get as much of a clean background as you can possibly find. 
Um, and just quickly here, I'll show you another short video on um, the importance of using the right camera angle. Always make sure the camera isn't pointed down. Uh, make sure the camera is above you so you get a better angle. And I have a really great example here I'm just gonna play for you in terms of um, the difference that it makes with camera angle. So this is a compilation of videos of um, these different girls who are showing you when you have the camera down versus facing up. Actually, let me just go back here a little bit. Um, so this girl, she's really funny. Um, check this out. So this is the first angle. The camera is down below her chin and now she puts it up. It makes a big difference, much more attractive. Another one here, this girl, camera angle facing down. She's quite beautiful. And now when it's facing up, it definitely has a much better um, view of her face without looking a little bit, you know, chubby under the chin there or uh, a little bit um, awkward with the lighting. Any questions on that, folks? Camera lighting, sound, background, anything at all? Nothing at this point. Okay, wonderful. Okay. So when you're on video, how to be ridiculously likable. Here's a little puppy. Who doesn't love puppies, right? Um, but we love puppies and we love little animals because they listen and they don't talk back, right? They really care about us and let us know that uh, they're, they're compassionate towards our needs. So when you're speaking with people, whether it's on the phone or whether it's online um, through a video conference, you should listen, like really, really listen to what they have to say. A lot of times people get on the phone and they launch into this conversation and um, they're just sharing and unloading all of their own personal thoughts and not giving a moment for the other person to respond. So that will go a long way into creating connections with people is to really hear, you know, how is their day going? What's happening with them? Um, ask questions about the other person. So there's a saying that if you have a conversation with somebody and you talk about them, they end up coming away thinking that you are awesome. Even if you didn't say anything about yourself, they just suddenly think like you're the greatest person ever just because you've taken time to listen. You might've been the first person all day to ask them how they were doing. Um, so that will go a long way as well. So remember, we're building connections here. We're not calling people up to sell them stuff. You know, they already know what you do for a living or if they don't, you know, they, you can just mention briefly, but don't uh, spend a ridiculous amount of time talking about your own stuff. Um, being positive is another good thing as well, offering solutions. So, you know, I know it's tough to get toilet paper, but if you go to Metro, the lines are shorter, it's low traffic, grocery store, you'll probably get your toilet paper there, something like that. And now finding points of commonality as well. So as they're speaking to you and you're listening, you know, they'll say things like, you know, I have a baby at home. You can say, you know what, when I had my baby as well, many years ago, you know, it was hard to find time to rest. Why don't you ask your husband to watch the baby and you can take a bath. That's your me time for the day. Or other points of commonality, you know, I'm really struggling with this technology. Even if I don't understand how to use particular um, piece of technology, I can say, you know what, call up my friend, David. David is really good with this. He can help you and he can work with you online to get this fixed or to organize your email or to find something that you need. So anywhere that they're having a problem and you also are having struggles or you have in the past, you know, latch on to that, say, hey, I know how you feel. Here's how I got through, or here's a solution, or here's somebody else who can help you. If I can't help you, here's somebody else who can help you. And of course, sharing ideas and tips, how to, you know, do what you need to do during this time. As I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, um, you know, always be willing to help other people. Listening for pain points and offering solutions. I kind of mentioned that before and be sincere. So, you know what, if they have, uh, you know, a certain situation and you pretend that you're interested and you, you're not really interested, they can sense that too. So only really be truthful. And of course, smile. People recognize and um, typically feel that people who smile are friendlier or more intelligent or brighter, more positive, and they're drawn to that type of thing. So find a reason to smile each day. Okay, so now some strategy for attending online events, what you should do before, during, and after that will definitely secure those relationships uh, much in a much stronger way. So number one, what I always do, whether it's an in-person event or an online event, I research the event organizers 
and the speakers. So the event organizers, you know, if I come across an event on Eventbrite or through a newsletter or a friend sends me a note, you know, I find out what's this organization about? What are the other areas where they might help me? They might have other um, events, even if this event that my friend shared with me isn't relevant to me, maybe they have other events that I'd like to attend and learn about something that I really need to know. And then research the speakers as well, because it might turn out that the person who is presenting has certain skills um, and you might want to connect with them after the event and say, hey, I've got a burning question. Can you help me with this? So it just puts you in a place of really um, focusing on what you want to get out of that session because you know a little bit of their background and what their skills are and maybe making connections to how they can be helpful to you in the future. Um, and this might seem random, create an email follow-up template. So I make a habit of emailing individuals who I've had a conversation with at an event. I email them either later that same day when I get home or back to my office or the day after. If you want to email them later that day, you're going to be so tired by the time you're done with your day, done with that event, you won't have any creative energy to craft an email message. So create a little sample template, you know, hi, John, it was great meeting you at X event and just leave the space and then just fill it in when you get back home. But just create a follow up template. And I believe I have a couple samples for you here too. I'll share in a minute. And then determine your measurable goal for the event. How many quality connections do you want to make? So this is more relevant to um, in-person events, but um, you know, you can't work through, you can't meet everyone, especially in a webinar situation. You're not going to meet anyone. You're not going to really talk with anyone. Um, but there are certain strategies you can take to actually reach out to them after the event. And that's what I'm going to share here. Um, okay, so during an online event, ask questions and particip participate in the discussion. Um, that's how you're going to get the most out of it. If you really take advantage of the knowledge of the speaker, because they know stuff that you want to learn. So why not ask? And they're, they're quite happy to engage with you and have that discussion. So ask questions when you can. Don't be shy. Um, and then also take notes about people's business names or services. So we know that this event today is being recorded and you'll be able to access it later. Um, but what you can do during that time, because you never know when the video is going to come back to you, um, at the moment, take notes. You might hear somebody say, oh, I have a business doing this. And you're like, oh, great. I really need help in that area. So take down that person's name. If you see it on the display of their, their names in the participant area, um, make notes and just remember to follow up with them later and say, hey, I noticed that you were also on the digital communications webinar. I'm interested in hearing more about such and such business. So you're going to make connections there. So do that during the session. And another quick tip that I learned recently is to do a screen capture of the participants names. So you might, if you're familiar with Zoom, you probably already know this. If you move your mouse down to the bottom of the Zoom window, there is a little button that says participants. When you click on participants, it should show a side panel with all the names of the people who are currently in the event. If you do a screen capture, it's a great way to come back later and see who else was in the event because that way, if you needed to reach out to them, you can have the correct spelling of their name. And guess what? It's easier to find them on LinkedIn and make that connection. So again, you don't necessarily want to connect with everybody, but individuals who you think there would be chance, a chance for a meaningful conversation. Okay. And later that day. So I would recommend sending a connection request on LinkedIn or inviting them to join your Facebook page if you think it is a good connection. And only connect with people who you're genuinely interested in talking with. Is there a question? Well, there were a couple of comments about talking dogs. So a couple of people, their talk, dogs talk back to them. So we'll leave <laughs> that one for uh, America's Got Talent. One of the... Uh, <laughs> One of the questions was, does Zoom, um, do they have backgrounds that people can use? They do have backgrounds. When you're using Zoom backgrounds, though, you've got to make sure that the real life background you have doesn't have a whole bunch of stuff in it because it's very hard for the backgrounds to calibrate. And then you'll end up looking like you're a shapeshifter, you're underwater, like some of your body parts will blend into the background. You'll be missing a hand or whatever. Make sure it's completely clean. It doesn't have to be an actual green screen but if you have a, like a bookshelf and plants and whatever it doesn't work that well i choose not to use them because sometimes they fail 
So I, can I interrupt for one yeah. second? If there's Bill, I don't know Bill Noonan, if you're interested in saying something and letting people see your background. Bill attended a session that we did last week and I noticed he's already put everything in place with his, with his background, his corporate logo, their values are there. So it's actually a very good, uh, it's a good background based on the, an event that we had last week. So Bill, if you want to, I don't know if you don't, if you don't mind after that, it's a nice looking yeah, go background. Ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when you attend these events, I, I learn something new every time. And this is one of the things I learned from the last one. I used to sit in my office, and it was like a same color, but no no uh, signage on it. So uh, what I'm doing now is sitting out in the main area with our company's uh, background. Mm -hmm. Looks great. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, I'm just going to jump in and ask if, if someone someone doesn't have their lines muted. Could you please make sure your line is muted? We are hearing some background noise. Thank you. Thank you. All right, excellent. Um, okay, so just want to get back on track here. Thank you for that, Bill. I appreciate it. That's a great idea as well. If you do have a banner, definitely make use of it. Sort of... Uh, you know, a very subtle way to show your brand as well. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, okay, uh, where am I? All right. So after folks connect with you on social media, um, start a conversation. So a lot of people will connect and it drives me crazy. If people try to connect with you on LinkedIn and they don't add a note, I'm like, well, why should I connect with you? Who are you? Um, you know, what's, do we have a common friend? Are you interested in something I offer? It's just poor etiquette. Try to create a note when you LinkedIn link with somebody on LinkedIn. Um, but if you're the one initiating, if they do connect with you, start a conversation. Just write back and say, thanks for connecting. It was great to see you on the webinar the other day. Um, you know, is there any way that I can help you right now? How are you doing? How are you managing? Um, and just let them know that, you know, you're actually interested in them as an individual. And in all caps, I have here, do not try to sell them anything. People don't want to feel like you just see dollar signs when you look at them. Definitely make a, a bigger impression as far as making a connection, not making a sale. And then one week later, and I'm going to show you an email, a couple email templates in the next slide. Um, one week later, just to keep in touch, send a personalized email to remind you of where you first met. They might not even remember your name. Just say, hey, just following up. It's been a week since I met you at this webinar. How are you doing? How are things going? Again, don't try to sell them anything. And you might want to drop in a call to action. Ask if they would like to have a video chat or a phone call if you think there is a real connection there. Um, and here's a hint. Phone calls are easier and you're more likely to get a yes instead of a video call because some people are really worried about oh my hair is not right or i mean i don't think anybody's hair is right right now okay <laughs> and I, I include myself on that as well really need a haircut um but they're they're uncomfortable with video on some level or uncomfortable with the uh the technology if you offer them an option phone call or video a lot of times with phone calls it'll be easier for them to say yes let's do it it's just easier for me i don't have to organize my background and all this stuff um let's just pick up the phone and that'll be much easier Okay, so now what to say in an email, how to connect, how to network and use email to your advantage. I'm gonna show you two slides coming up. One slide has a bad example of an email and the other has a good example of an email. So first here's a bad example of a follow-up email. So you probably can't read this, it's really tiny, but I'll just give you the points. I mean, first of all, just by looking at it, you can see it's way too long. And if it's long here on desktop, imagine scrolling through on your, your mobile phone. You'll be scrolling forever because the text wrap is so short. Like, it's just way too much information, especially if they're not really familiar with you. It's way too long. Too much bragging and talking about themselves and their accomplishments and how many degrees they have and how many awards they won. And it just seems like someone who's really, really bragging a lot. And it's, it's a bit of a turnoff. Um, so focusing on themselves and not talking about you, that is a turnoff. And um, in this particular case, it was just a spam email. I didn't give them permission to email me in the first place. So I was a little bit taken aback that they just tried to spam me. 
And then they give me all this stuff to do in this email. And I know you can't read it. It's really tiny, but it's saying, do this, um, connect with me on LinkedIn, schedule a call with me, view my interview, sign up for my course, do this, do this, do this. I'm like, Hey, I don't work for you. <laughs> Why are you giving me all this stuff to do? And who are you? And I didn't, I never heard of you before. So please don't just email people out of the blue. Always make it a follow-up to a phone call or a follow-up to being in the same event together. So you have a, a common frame of reference and not just coming up, showing up out of nowhere because people really do not like that at all. Now here's a good example. Okay. Hi, Stephanie. Name her by name. Nice talking to you and being your booth neighbor at the Ajax Business Forum yesterday. We can translate this to online instead of being your booth neighbor. You can say nice talking to you or, you know, seeing you as a participant in XYZ event. So, I mean, overall, I kept it short and sweet. I reminded them of what we talked about or where we met, and it's got a very friendly tone. Another thing I do in my email signature is over the past year and a half, I've adopted a signature with a photo on it because sometimes they might not remember you or remember what you look like. And um, this will help to jog their memory. And also it's a more friendly face and people tend to trust emails more when they can put a face to a name. So if there's a way that you can put that in, or if anyone needs help with that, give me a call. I'd be happy to just spend some time and show you how to set that up on your email. And it really helps people to bond with you, especially if they've never met you in person before. Any exam, uh, any questions at this stage? We're all good. There was one, there's one, on, on our Facebook page, there is nowhere to invite people. Have you ever heard of this? Um, there should be. There should be. I don't see why there wouldn't be. Or worst case scenario, you can copy the URL, the, the, the page code, right, the, at the top of the page, and paste it into a personal message. And when they click through, they can just decide to follow or like. That's what I would do. But yeah, there should be. I'm not sure why you're not seeing that. Hmm. Okay. I'll give my contact info at the end of the session. So if there's anything that you're really stuck on, um, email me. And if I can help you with that, I'd be happy to help you with that. Okay. And finally, for ongoing commu communication, especially with social media, like and comment on their posts. Um, share something that's relevant, like, a, you know, an article and something that's you know, information that's relevant to something you had discussed previously. Um, inviting them to events, so not just real events, but virtual events that you'll also be attending. Um, and just share stuff that you think would be useful for them. Another thing that I found uh, very helpful is when people offer to connect me with other people who I need. So let's say, for example, I'm really trying to get my foot in the door at an organization who hires speakers. Um, if I know somebody who knows the coordinator of that that um, that program or that event, I'll say, hey, can you introduce me to so-and-so? And that way I can get my foot in the door. So people really appreciate that quite a lot. And um, ask for their opinion about something. You know, you don't have to be the one with all the answers. You can call up them up and say, what do you think about this? Or I, you know, I'm struggling with such and such. People love to help. Okay, so we're just about wrapping up here. Just a few other um, uh, slides just to give you some follow-up information. Uh, any questions at this point? No, there's nothing questions. at this point. Nothing? Oh, okay, good. So on this slide, I'm just going to ask you to take a, street, a screenshot. What I'm offering to everyone is a complimentary, complimentary digital strategy session. Um, there's no obligation at all. I don't make you sign up with me or anything like that. But just in the spirit of helping everyone where they might be struggling on one or two little points, um, I'm willing to have a chat with anyone who would like to um, find out a little bit more. So if you do need some support, take a screenshot and there's my email address. And I also want to give you um, just a heads up to the next two sessions that I'll be delivering. So part two, it's going to be about Canva and that's happening next Wednesday, I believe, Andrea, it's May 13th. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So May 13th, um, another free session, part two of the series on digital communications. Um, I'm going to train people on how to use Canva for social media or any type of marketing material at all. So that's helpful because Canva is great for people like me who are not professional uh, 
uh, graphic designers and you might not have the budget to hire one, it gives you some easy tools that you can use. So you might want to look that up on the uh, uh, register on the AppBot website. And then the week after, I'm delivering a session on constant contact. So how to design newsletter templates and uh, get your communications stream flowing nicely through constant contact. They are a sponsor of ours and um, they definitely have excellent customer support. So those are two events that are coming up that you might be interested in. Okay, and I think that's it for me. Um, anyone else, uh, any more questions? Or if not, I'll just hand it back over to Andra. Nope, there's nothing else. And I'll pass it on to Nicole. <laughs> can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Yeah, I can. Of course you can. Um, so for the Canva, uh, the seminar, we need to uh, download the Canva, right? Because are no. we going to go through the just the instructions or you're going to do examples that we can kind of... Uh... So the answer to your question is no, you don't need to download Canva, uh, sorry, in, sign up for Canva. Um, same for constant contact. You don't have to have an account. It's just going to be a demonstration. So you won't be following along with me doing the same work as I am. Mm -hmm. It's just a demonstration to show you the general flow of how to set things up and how to design different, different um, projects. I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. okay. So again, I, I hear the, the screenshot if you just, just want to connect with me on any level. Well, thank you, Antoinette, so, so much for that presentation. Um, and she truly does mean it, everybody. She's here to help. She wants to uh, help you guys succeed in your business. And so her contact information was there on the slide, but also you can find uh, her in our member directory on our website. So feel mm -hmm. free to uh, peruse that. Um, I did, and I should have done this earlier, wanted to make a special shout out to one of our directors who's in the house today, Talia, how are you? Talia Lane um, is one of our directors on our board new this year and is from Mathis Financial Group. So if you've been attending all of our webinars. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> huge supporter of the Board of Trade, and so we thank you very much for being here today. Um, and I wanted to do a special shout out as well to a special guest. Uh, from our friends at the Timmins Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we have with us today Shaylin, who is their members program specialist. And I have to say, this has just been one of the great things uh, to come out of, you know, I guess this whole pandemic and emergency sort of situation where we've switched to virtual and now we're able to connect with folks um, all over the world, essentially, who we wouldn't normally be able to connect with. So great to have our friends from Timmins Chamber of Commerce with us today, too. Um, Antoinette already touched on the next two sessions, so that's great. Uh, look forward to seeing you all at those. Um, and just a couple other uh, upcoming events I want to make note. On May 12th, we have a webinar uh, called E-Commerce for Business, Getting Started. So if you've been thinking about moving your business to an online platform for online sales, uh, that is on May 12th and I believe is uh, with Teresa Shaver from the BACD. So Antoinette mentioned BACD, she'll be joining us that day for that presentation. We also have upcoming on the 19th, post-crisis behavioral intelligence for transitioning back to work. So an interesting uh, conversation around what that might begin to look like. Of course, we're all and have been working in this new normal for quite a while now. And so um, transitioning back to work will be will be certainly difficult. Um, yeah, we'll have to get back. To, we'll have to get used to that again. Um, and then we have on May 28th, Excel tips and tricks. So updating your skills uh, while you're working from home on uh, the program Excel. And that, I guess, is it for me. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, you know that you can call me anytime um, or our staff if you have any questions, anything you want to chat about. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, if you have any thoughts on future programming ideas or uh, might want to do a presentation of your own, we can absolutely have that conversation as well. So thanks to everybody, and I will leave it there. Andrew, do you have anything else you'd like to cover? 
We look forward to seeing you at the next session. Please keep awesome. an eye on our website. Events are being added, if not daily, at least weekly. Um, and we are progressing some major announcements of our events coming shortly. So um, just keep looking for the newsletters and uh, check our website regularly. Yes, and oh, I should say what I didn't mention, our ne next networking event is tomorrow. So if you haven't registered for that, um, love to see you there. We're, we've moved our formal shuffle um, how we normally do if you've been to our networking events to an online virtual plat platform. So you'll be able to have small conversations with small groups, shuffle around and get an opportunity to speak to at least half of the folks that are in the room um, as we normally would in person. So just, just online and using video. So that is tomorrow. Again, it's on our event calendar and I'll leave it there. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Antoinette again. Um, and we'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.